Hello. Uh, I'll hear about the drugs, uh, Mr. Uh, it's all in there. Just like to say that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think the whole drugs experience is a very worthwhile experiment in personal development. I'm sure one day the law will be changed, but for the moment, I'm, uh, I'm coming clean. What drugs, Amnesty? <laughs> I thought it was today, isn't it? There are drugs, Amnesty. You, you bring in all your stuff and it's, it's forgotten about. Well, nobody told me anything about it. <laughs> no. Let's see if any of my colleagues know something. Anyone in there know anything about a drugs amnesty? No. Well... <laughs> the bird he must fly and the fish he must swim The horse he must trot and the girl she must slim Let's all join together, hoof in hoof, hand in hand Fin in fin, wing in wing, it's a very good plan. Let's build a love state. Yeah. Here in Notting Hill Gate. Oh, that's that's so, uh, what do you believe in? Uh, do you believe in communism? Oh, you're really boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, this is what it's all about. It may be boring, but that doesn't answer my question. You're boring, you're middle aged, and you've got short hair. <laughs> Sit down! Clearly, you believe in not brilliant. Bars, I Those cats really showed old Kemp to be the idiot that he is. Did you see the way that he had to back down? No. Actually, I thought it was the others who backed down. I didn't see any cats on there. <laughs> I thought Kemp was rather professional, actually. I always think he handles these things very well. Alex, in six months' time, we're going to have to shoot people like him. Oh, six months. Approximately. Yeah. Just, I, I'm going away for a few days in September. <laughs> I'm taking my nephew down to uh, the Ryder Cup at Royal Birkdale. Are you, are you talking about golf, Alex? Yeah. Do you have any idea how establishment golf is? Give me that. <laughs> Can somebody please call an ambulance? I've really, really hurt my leg. <laughs> You know, my time in hospital really did give me a lot of time to think, you know. I think we should launch some kind of protest, you know. I think it will really impress Jerry Gervitz. Jerry Gervitz? The editor of the Alternative Los Angeles Times? Yep, he's in London this week. Isn't he the biggest freak in the world? Yes, he is. <laughs> so how did they know that? Did they, did they hold some sort of competition? <laughs> yes, they did. And, uh, he won by several lengths. <laughs> And he's so great, isn't he? And he's coming here. I've asked him to stay at this flat and he's readily agreed. <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, Jerry Kervitz, you know, the biggest freak in the world is going to be staying here. I mean, it's just... I can't... It's, uh... <laughs> I actually uh, fainted from excitement then. <laughs> just... <laughs> so, no, but maybe we should organise some sort of protest to do while he's here, you know. Maybe, maybe you can research that, Alex, you know, look up a few events we could disrupt, you know. Let's get our picture in the paper, you know. Nice picture of me, surrounded by lots of followers, all hanging on to my every word, and a big headline saying how important I am, you know. <laughs> you you realise you said all that out loud? <laughs> Did I? I'm sorry, sorry. Hector Dodd disrupted something last week, actually. He uh, saw a couple of people playing snakes and ladders and yelled out some choice obscenities. What did he yell out? I can't quite remember. Something about Vietnam. Had very little to do with snakes and ladders, but uh, very bad language. <laughs> yeah, well, you're probably shouting out something like, Release the friggin' snakes! Or, you know, you... Something that would be quite disruptive at a, you know, <laughs> at a snakes and ladders tournament. Something, you know, just something that would be... That would, I'd hate that, anyway. <laughs> oh, that would be Gervitz. chased those cops right off the campus. I had tear gas in my eyes for days. Yeah, I looked like this. <laughs> Just like I'd taken a big bag of drugs. 
What a freak! <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I know, you know, it's the same here, you know, a real sense of revolution in the air. You know, I mean, last, last week I emptied a whole bag of crisps over a traffic warden, you know, and she... <laughs> she really was quite badly soiled. Hey, you, you're Roy, right? Right. Yeah, whatever. Give me that box. OK. Yeah. I got hand grenades. I got rocket launches. And I've got mortars. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got weapons too, you know. I mean, we really are quite militant. <laughs> you got any cash on you? Some, yeah. Give me a pound. No, no. Give me seven pounds. You want seven pounds? Yeah. Not five or ten, because it's got... No, seven. <laughs> that is how little money means to me. That was my money. So? probably wouldn't understand. He's never actually really been on a, on a real protest. Yes, I have. I actually did a big protest at the uh, Miss World contest last year, and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, no, if you remember, you weren't actually there. You sprained your ankle and couldn't go. <laughs> yeah, but I still impressed people, didn't I? Number three, Miss Austria. <laughs> How's your ankle, love? Yeah, have some more grapes. No, Mum, it's just a sprained ankle. OK, thank you. She's got a nice pair of knockers. <laughs> I might get my hands on them. A very well built girl, isn't she, love? <laughs> you like to give those jugs a nice big squeeze, would you? You bet I would. How about you, Ray? Would you like to give those jugs a big squeeze? <laughs> well, I am surprised at this sexist talk, you know. Especially from you. You're a type of woman. <laughs> You'd fancy having a go at that girl's jugs? Of course he would. As the same as the rest of us. They're not jugs, anyway, or knockers. They're breasts. So you used to call mine, love? Baloobas. <laughs> Baloobas, that's right. It was that African tribe we saw on the telly, wasn't it? Do you remember all the girls they used to go around with their things all swinging about? <laughs> I didn't wear bras, I'll never know. <laughs> Look, it's very natural for women not to wear bras in Africa, OK? In fact, it's very unnatural for women to wear bras at all. It's just what your dad says. <laughs> you two are so alike, you know. It's uncanny sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, come in, Hugo. I d well, I, just, I don't need to... Hugo, just... come in. Where's Gervitz? Well, he's gone out for a meeting with John Lennon. Yeah, about the whole future of the protest movement. It's probably the most important meeting that anyone's had with anyone ever in the history of the world, ever. <laughs> well, that asking him about protesting. Um, I think it's quite good. Don't exaggerate, Hugo. <laughs> it's just, rather than go on about, you know, how great protesting is, I thought I'd try a new angle. So I've written that protesting is a complete waste of time. But uh, my argument's so weak and unconvincing that you end up just reading it and thinking, this guy's an idiot. So it actually ends up being an article for protesting, which is quite clever. <laughs> right, well, yes, it's great, but, um, you know, the deadline was last week. Well, could you put it in the next issue? Yes. Yes, I will. I'll put it in the next issue bin now. Where's that? Um... Ah, there it is. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. How is the doctors, by the way? Have you got, to, have you got long to live? <laughs> no, no, I, ju I just had a touch of flu, Ray. I'm not, I'm not going to die. Why, why do you think I was going to die? I don't think you're going to die, Hugo. It was just a little joke, you know? I've been thinking a lot about death these days. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, I sometimes wonder, if, if I had an incurable disease, you know, and I only had three months to live, what would I do, you know? What would you do if you only had three months to live? I'd look for a cure. No, 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 no. It's an incurable disease, OK? You are definitely going to die, all right? 
No, I'm, I'm sure there'd be a, a cure if I just, you know, looked... No, no, Hugo. <laughs> there's no cure, OK? Absolutely no chance. I'd still look for one. No, <laughs> Hugo, you, you don't get it. You're not going to find one, OK? Well, I mean, I'd look... Hugo, for the love of God, you will never find one! Great, I have to try. <laughs> ah, my next patient. Hugo, I have to speak privately with Ray. <laughs> Ray, there's something I've been... He's still there. Hugo! <laughs> there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a while. Um, it's quite a serious situation, so you'd better sit down. <laughs> I am sitting down. Sit down even further. <laughs> Ray, I'm pregnant. What? Well, um, OK, well, we, 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 can, we can deal with this. You'll support me, won't you, Ray? Yeah, of course. Of course I will, Jill. Can I, can I just say one thing? Uh, we haven't had sex for a year and a half. <laughs> I could still be pregnant. Have you slept with somebody else? No. But I could still be pregnant. Right. Um, that would mean it was a virgin birth. Could be. Well, OK, again, that would mean you're bringing our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ back into the world. OK, I'm not really pregnant. I actually came in here to tell you that I can't get pregnant because I'm on the pill. But I bet that if I did get pregnant, you'd just abandon me. You're such a selfish goon! I don't do it. I'm not a selfish goon, OK? I'm really, you know, support women and all that stuff. You know? <laughs> and now that you're on the pill as well, maybe we can, uh, you know, get to work. <laughs> I'm not on the pill so that I can have sex with you, Ray. That would be the most incredibly facile reason for being on it. I am on the pill because it liberates women. Cynthia says it's good. Oh, uh, well, she'll never be on the pill because she's just a fat, ugly lesbian bitch <laughs> everybody hates, apart from a bunch of naive girls in Chelsea who work in publishing. What did you say? Nothing. <laughs> All right. yeah, Alex, hi. Yeah, did you find somewhere that we could protest that? Uh, no. You said you were going to have a word with Jim Sharples. No. Tina Weatherall said she knew something. You were going to talk to her. No. Bunny Long said something about a big protest going down. You were going to have a word with him. No, no. <laughs> right, well done, anyway. <laughs> this is really crucial, you know. I mean, Gervitz has got mortars and rockets and stuff. Well, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to the shops, I'm going to get all the papers, OK? Try and find some event we can make a scene at, you know? And I'm not talking about a Snakes and Ladders tournament. The World of Sandpaper Exhibition. <laughs> yeah, well, I've looked through all the papers and there's nothing else on. But it is an international event, so there will be photographers there. So, how do we feel about sandpaper? Well, they say it's the styrofoam of the 1970s. <laughs> now, one of the few things I do know about sandpaper is that it, it actually smooths out rough edges. Um, are we for or against that? Um, I just... I don't know, you know. I just... I, I wish sandpaper could be as straightforward as Vietnam. <laughs> I, I think we should probably be, um, against it, because otherwise we'll just be sort of standing there going, oh, look. Isn't this sandpaper great? Yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Oh, hi, hi, Jerry. We, we, we found a great thing to protest at. And uh, how was John Lennon? Are, are you okay? Well, the freak is a little freaked out. John's come up with this whole new idea, and he's called it a bed in. Now, instead of organizing politically or pointing out society's ills by violent protest, now we're going to change things by going to bed with a chick. <laughs> Well, that's a brilliant idea. That's, why didn't someone think of that before? Oh I've always thought, actually, that after Ringo, you know, John was the cleverest Beatle. So now I'm going to spend the rest of my life protesting in bed. <laughs> hey, Faye. Yes? What's this protest you were going to go on? Well, you've heard of sandpaper. <laughs> So, I, I'm raring to go. Uh, got my sign. I think you've got that a bit wrong, Hugo. War and Peace is a film. It's a book, Ray. Yeah, well, it may be a book, Alex, but I think the film's a little bit more famous. 
you know, I'm actually I'm really nervous, but you know, I, I just have to not think about what could happen. You know, that it could all just go really horribly wrong and turn into a big riot, and people just I get hit on the head with a rock, and I could just be killed. They're dead. I could die. I can't go, Ray. I can't do it. You've got to get over this fear of death. You know, you've just got to face it. It's going to happen to us all one day. It's a bit fatalistic with you, Ray. No, it's not. Jill, I forgot to uh, warn you, going on this demo, there's probably going to be a lot of liberally-minded women around, so um, I may get off with someone. You're OK with that, aren't you? You're hardly going to score at a sandpaper exhibition, right? <laughs> well, I just thought I'd warn you, OK? Oh, I'm really looking forward to this protest. Aren't you, Alex? What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tremendously excited about it. <laughs> you never get excited about anything, Alex. You just, you're too laid back, you are. You wouldn't be excited if a bomb went off. Sorry, did you say something, Ray? <laughs> Shit, man, I was trying to defuse one of my bombs. It went off. Where's your tub? Uh, through there. I really, really quite like Gerbitz, you know. He's got um, lovely eyes and a really nice sense of humour and um, he's very sensitive. Whose books are those in the bathroom? Ah, they're mine. Yeah, well, you better move them or I'll piss all over them when I go to the john. <laughs> I am the biggest freak in the world! <laughs> what a freak! <laughs> Sorry, so I really, um, really must just say I, um... I do like your hair. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how you, how you managed to get it like that. I, my hair just sort of refused to do that. So. Don't even attempt to get your hair like mine. My hair is a one-off, OK? The freak's hair is a one-off! Ah! Ah! He is so cute. Teddy bear. Bear wants a hug. <laughs> oh. Right, we're off on this protest then. Now, it's very likely we're going to get arrested by the police and held under tight security, so we might have to arrange some bail, Alex. Um, I might have to get in contact with Lester Youngman about, uh, you know, legal aid. And um, is there anything else? Do you think these socks are too bright? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Jerry. Uh, Jerry. What? Are you, are you coming on the protest? Because I think it'll be quite good. Nah, no way, man. I, I'm going on a bed in instead. Right, and is, is, is this just you? No, no, no. I'm doing it with Jill. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Jill? Would you mind joining me in the bedroom, please? I've been waiting an hour. <laughs> Remember, I made that beckoning gesture with my head. I don't like being gestured to like some kind of dog, Ray. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Just... Could you just please join me, please, for a minute? Jill! Right!
Now, you will be careful with Gervitz, won't you? You know, often when a man and a woman go to bed together, there's a sexual element. The last time we went to bed together... Yeah, all right. I mean, uh, yes, the last time we went to bed together, there wasn't a sexual element, OK? There was a mousetrap element. <laughs> yeah, it's not funny, Jill, OK? Most of my blood supply was concentrated in that area. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, look, I'm... Just... Gervitz is... You know, I mean, don't... Don't have sex with him, OK? Just promise me this one thing. Can you do that? Just a tiny little thing. Just do it for me. I don't think it would be right for you. Please, Jill, will you promise me that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jill. <laughs> it's good enough for me. saying that is the longest piece of sandpaper in the world. Yes. It's very unusual to see sandpaper laid out flat like that, especially this type of extra rough sandpaper. It's a very exciting time for sandpaper. And he just a massage of which to be like. Ah, <clears throat> Sheikh Hamoud's very agitated. He's unused to seeing extra rough sandpaper laid out flat. In his country, it's very rarely seen except in large rolls. Tell the Sheikh that in the future, it will be very much more common to see sandpaper laid out in strip form. That is very much the future for sandpaper. World peace now. <laughs> Shush me, Alex. It's supposed to be a protest. Sorry. That's rather embarrassing. <laughs> what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of what the world But for everyone Lord, we don't need another mountain There are mountains and hills There are oceans and rivers Enough to cross, enough to last Till the end of time You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I think you've actually tamed the freak. <laughs> Cup of tea? Yes, please. stand on that big strip of sandpaper over there. <laughs> Look at that bloody hippie there, standing in the middle of that strip of sandpaper. <laughs> Make that sandpaper area. I'm making a protest. I don't care about your protest, you stupid hippie. Get off that sandpaper. Not until there's world peace. Very good. Oh, well, I suppose you want world peace as well, do you? Yeah, I mean, obviously that would be that would be great. Although I, I should really be at home uh, washing my hair. <laughs> I think everybody here would like world peace too. But all these people want to do is sell some sandpaper. drugs lying around. Well, it was obvious Gervis was going to scoff the lot. Freaks just love taking big bags of drugs. <laughs> I'm going to give Peter Matt Stewart a ring. OK, he'll know what to do. He's seen this kind of thing before. Well, careful, Ray. He did get the date of the drugs amnesty wrong. Yeah, well, he'll know what to do, OK? I'm going to ring him. <sighs> <sighs> Peter, great. 
right, you're here. It's, it's, it's just through here. Okay. Right. I know what the problem is. He's taken a big bag of drugs. <laughs> right, what grade were they? Sorry. I'm... Well, that 50% toxic rate is pretty high. I reckon he's at about 70 to 75. Could be a build-up of ulnic fluid in the secondary cortex. I've seen that happen before. A mesomotic seizure occurs at an intensity of, well, sometimes several Williams. <laughs> um, thrombotic valve damage. Haven't seen that for a few years. OK, can anybody tell me when uh, five seconds is up, please? No. OK, fine. <laughs> um, yeah, don't interrupt, Alex. It's very important that we keep absolutely silent. <whistles> OK, could somebody pop out and keep that bird quiet, please? <laughs> yeah, OK, Ray, have you still got that sledgehammer, the one you use at the American Embassy? Um, yeah. <laughs> so fetch it for me, please. Is he going to be all right? Yes, yes, I'm pretty confident I can bring him round. Uh, here it is. OK, I'll just do the trick. <coughs> right. <laughs> I really, really hope Peter knows what he's doing here. Oh, don't you worry, Jill. Peter knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. OK, one last thing. This could be crucial, actually. Uh, anyone got any sandpaper? Sandpaper. Yes, I just need to blunt down the edges of the hammer here, otherwise... <laughs> um, no, no, we don't have any sandpaper. We're against it. <laughs> You're against sandpaper? Yeah. Shit. Well, never mind. Probably won't make any difference. <clears throat> OK, here goes. <clears throat> well, I think you probably just had a little bit too much confidence in Peter. Yeah, well, you know, I think you're right, actually, Alex. I mean, I really can't see the difference the sandpaper would have made. You know, I mean... And what, what was that weird thing he said? Otherwise. Otherwise what? You know, he was still going to smash his head in with a massive sledgehammer. <laughs> Such a tragedy. He was really nice. How did they get that picture? Apparently the CIA planted a camera in his beard. <laughs> ah, look, brilliant. Here's the report on our protest. Fantastic. Here's... Right, um, I've got to go anyway. I'm going to uh, an anti-apartheid demo that uh, Hector Dodd organised. You know, he's so brave. When they did that South African rugby match, they actually drop-kicked him over the main stand. I know. <laughs> he's a feisty little bastard. <laughs> Jill, um, nothing happened between you and Gervitz, did it? Jerry and I had the most meaningful experience I have ever had with a man. We shared a common ecstasy, the like of which I've never experienced before, nor ever will again. We bonded together like two... Futuristic brands of top of the range super glue. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. That's all I wanted to hear. Love. And all that we're saying 